This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got us a walk-in floral cooler here that I believe is just recently converted to 407. C, possibly new evaporator put on it. And it's not uh, cool, they just turned it on. I guess it's been off or something. So anyhow, put on the gauges, wanted to see where we were at on our pressures, and we're running right at a 17 suction pressure, which comes out to a negative two degrees, which it's a little low for a cooler. We know it's probably low. I don't see anything in my sight glass. It is at least green, but it looks to me like it's probably completely empty. We probably have a leak, to be honest with you. You could look for the leak right away, or we could go ahead and get charged up, because that compressor's hotter than heck. I just want to make sure everything's working right before I waste too much time looking for the leak. It's going to be probably either one of these flare fittings here, or possibly inside. They all look like, I don't see no oil in any of those, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get it charged back up. It's probably only a couple pounds that it needs anyway. Then we can start investigating and see where the leak's at. So far I've added five ounces to it. The compressor pretty much started slugging right away. It got really cold. It's not dropping in the suction pressure there, which makes me think it's not pumping at all. Let's go ahead and pump this thing down and see if it can pull down into a negative. I have a bad feeling we may have lost the compressor already. Because it's chugging there like it's just sitting in there. Nothing happening. I, I added, like I said, a few ounces to it and it just started acting stupid. I'm valved all the way in, front seated. We should be pulling vacuum right on my hose. Lucky there. Nothing's changing. Let's go ahead and hook up our high side gauge here. I can feel the solenoid, it's vibrating, it's hot. It appears to be working. They didn't put a T on the high side, so actually no great way to check the high side pressure. That would have been a good idea to put a T on there so that you could have just put your gauge on there. Now what you're gonna have to do is bypass your fan control, valve it off, unhook it, just a lot of hassle for nothing. It's really looking bad like we might have lost this compressor here. So we got our screwdriver wedged underneath there. Hopefully that'll keep it running the fan. If not, we'll have to jump it there. Let's go ahead and back seat this, which I think I might have already done it. Nope. Okay, that's back seated now. We should be able to take that off. Of course, I knocked that out when I dropped my pliers or it fell out. I'll tell you what, we ain't gonna fool with that. You gotta be careful if you're gonna do this live. You could easily short something out. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get our pliers. Just got a little bit of refrigerant there in that. So, crank it back in, open it up. Whoa, what in the world? My gauges just went overboard, is that what we did? Have we... Oh my. Yeah, we went so high that my gauges overdid it. Okay, we've got a major, major issue here. I've never seen my gauges do that before. This thing is either not dumping on itself or something but that literally just took the gauges higher than they can go, and I think these can go up to 800. Try it one more time. 
really even shut off, but any damage has already done, been done. Yeah, well over 600 pounds. I barely can undo my hoses there. So we're either we're either gummed up there in that solenoid or somewhere, but we are we are or we're massively overcharged. I don't know, something ain't right. Let's go ahead and get this thing turned off. Now let's think about this for a second. If we have a restriction, it should have pumped down into the receiver and shut off, but it didn't. All right, so here's the evaporator. Line set comes in. So we got the outside heated off, the inside on a fan. So let's go ahead and see if we can start isolating stuff. My gauge says negative five. That could be because it was in a cold area and now it's in hot or vice versa, I forget. Um, but my suction came up. So what we got here, if we open this valve up. Okay, we are open and we're at 180. And I see refrigerant bubbling through there. Kind of an oddball one, be the least, say the least. And I backed it out when I did that, so I didn't shut it. If anything, I should have been able to crank this thing in and make it pump down. I guess worst case scenario, we can crank it in, turn it on, see if it can pump down, which who knows what it's going to do. The suction came down, or I should say the suction came up. And with the suction coming up, it means it was actually as low as it could go. And we were at 18 earlier pounds. We got a little scavenger hunt going on there, don't we? Here it is. We caught that bee. He's going to eat him. There's another ant. I don't know what they're doing. Let's kick it on and see what it does. I don't think we're gonna need any refrigerant anytime soon here. Let's go kick it on and see what we got. Okay, we're building head pressure there. We're at 315 ish. Everything about this says it's overcharged. And there the pressure's coming down. What's funny is our suction was super low to begin with. I add five measly ounces and it goes berserk. This is very, very odd. Okay, so we pulled a little out and I believe it pumped down and shut off. Either that or it went off on overload because it's kind of vibrating. I could be picking things up from. Oh, that's the solenoid. That's all cold. It's been in since 16. I finally found some history on it. It's uh, very, very odd that it did what it did. We may have a TXV that's malfunctioning. I suppose that's a possibility. Let's go ahead and open this up, see if it goes through and comes back through. The head pressure's dropping, suction's coming up. There it kicked on. Now you're gonna probably act fine. I mean, I only removed just a small amount. Now suction's up higher like it should have been. It's not too horribly bad. I'll give it a minute to stabilize here. This is really odd the way it's acting. I've never seen it build that kind of pressure before. Makes no sense how five ounces did that. This thing has gotta hold more than five, you know. The receiver should have easily handled that. Answer coil is clean, so we're good on that. We are somewhere around the 87 degree mark. So 97, 107, 117, so we're about 20 something over ambient. 
suction's a lot better than what it was. It was super low. I mean, I don't know. It's been off since April, so I don't know if solenoid didn't open all the way. I mean, it just really makes no sense. That little bit of extra refrigerant must have pushed it over the edge. No idea how much it holds. That wasn't wrote down. Now it acts like it's going to work just fine, which is really great. We'll pump it down again and see what it does. Pressure's going up still, so we're probably overcharged. Really shouldn't go up that high. Yeah, it's gone quite a bit. 300 ish area. Yeah, it's definitely over. Alright, so we heated that up. Hopefully you can see that just the very top barely has any room at all for expansion. Just heating it up took my head pressure up to 325 from 250, 60-ish uh, area. So we're going to have to remove a little bit more and then we're going to need to check this thing and find out what exactly is going on here. I have a feeling that the TXV was not feeding properly. And whether or not it just started doing that, or maybe it did it before, and then people added to make up for it, I have no idea. Maybe it just started. Not sure right at this point. Let's go ahead and get that level to at least the 80% mark, so we've got room for expansion. And then uh, let's see what we can do with that TXV. See if it's needing set, if it needs adjustment, what exactly is going on. Okay, you can kind of see there that now we're about the 70, 80% mark area. So let's go ahead and open this back up, see how she acts. A little bit of heat right there brought it up to 350 pounds a head. So let's go ahead and open this back up and see what she does. Comes on about 40, which is about 23 degrees. So we're good on that like we got a solid sight glass still let's give it a little bit see if that changes hopefully not I know four ounces wouldn't have done that much to it all right so you can see the TXV in there sweating pretty good hard to check the superheat on this one here because there's no tap for the suction line and there's no suction line to get onto. Uh, all this here is pretty much sealed up. It's all those ones where you kind of hope it's right. Fans are shaking pretty good. It's really nice. It's getting cooler in here. So it's 89 degrees with the reflectiveness off the uh, panels there. So at 89, let's go 99, 109. We're 20 degrees over ambient. And suction's right in here at 35 degrees. It's coming back cool, which is good. Kind of surprising. Let me go ahead and check the superheat on that. I went ahead and put a bull nose looking uh, refrigerant tea on there. And the uh, fan cycled off and back on again, cycled on about 106 degrees. Our suction temperature is starting to drop, which is good. Getting down to 30 degree mark, which means we should be probably about 35 in there to 40. Superheat's running at 32, which is good. We've got at least our 20, 20 or 25 for our compressor superheat. So far everything's looking pretty good. I still am not 100% certain what exactly caused the low suction though. Let's go ahead and pump it down one more time here. Let's see how it does. 
we might have a TXV acting up. I mean, that'd be the most logical. Overcharging it shouldn't have caused it to do that. Not that I've ever seen. Let's see if it pumps down a little easier this time. It should start dropping after a little bit here. Watch our sight glass over there. You can kind of see it starting to bubble and lose the last remainders of refrigerant. Might still be a little too much in there. Definitely more than the five ounces that I put in there. Yeah, we're still, even with that valve off all that time right there, Just now starting to empty that sight glass out. This thing is taking forever to pump down. Finally. Good grievous. I don't know how it could have gotten so overcharged. Supposedly haven't had anything done to it since 16. That's enough to drive you nuts. And somebody's already got it stripped out. Just kicked it back on. Here comes our head pressure on. Got about 105, I think, is what they had it set for. And I did talk to the customer. He generally just flips the breaker off and does not let it pump down. So we could have had refrigerant in the evaporator and it migrated out to the compressor. They did a compressor change, supposedly potentially in the last year or two. So it's not as far back as I thought. So my history stuff's not real, real accurate. Unit could have had oil pumped into the evap. I'm not sure. It definitely probably didn't help the compressor a lot with the oil setting in it. Why it had, I mean, all I can think of maybe the oil was blocking off the TXV. So we removed a little bit more. It's pumping down a little quicker than what it did last time. We may need to pump or remove a little bit more out of it. Pressure's still building up a touch, but it's coming back down, which is a good sign. But finding out information there about it not getting sh uh, pumped down before it shuts off. I told the customer to turn the thermostat up before he shuts it off. And then that way it'll shut off on its own, then kill the power to it. That way everything's backed up against the solenoid, which is right there. And that keeps the refrigerant from migrating back to the compressor. This has been shutting off, I think around 10 area. We're, we're doggone close there. We'll check that level in that receiver again, see where we're at. We've pumped this down a few times, at least probably four or five times. It's been running pretty good. It's hit temperature. What I ended up doing was replacing the liquid dryer there. Now we got a date on it. This one here, I don't think that's only a year old. I mean, it's quite a bit of rust. I could be wrong. I would think they would have replaced it when they replaced the compressor. 07, maybe 19. But so anyhow, we replaced the dryer just as a precaution to see maybe, maybe there was some moisture in there in that TXV. I think the TXV was my problem. I mean, it definitely looks like it was a little bit low on charge. We got a little bit of flashing going on there, I think. Just a touch. It might be hitting temperature again, too, though. Now, I wish I would have uh, measured what I had in the bottle beforehand instead of just running it in there. But unfortunately, I did not. So I don't have an accurate measure on how much I removed. For it to be low suction, the only thing that would make sense is that TXV was sticking. It looks like it's a newer TXV, so it just makes no other sense to me as to why it did what it did other than the TXV. Could have been an ice crystal, could have been just some gunk in there. Maybe him not uh, shutting it off properly. Maybe oil build up in there, pump the oil out. I'm not 100% certain. If you guys have an idea, leave it down below. I'm gonna watch this for a minute, and if it doesn't start uh, going solid here, I'm gonna just give it a little squirt to bring it back up. Uh, but it looks like we're pretty much about there. Anyhow, uh, this is kind of an odd one. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.